gave it some room to breathe. Hey, what's up fiber folks? Welcome back or welcome to High Fiber Knits. My name is Emily and on this channel I do video podcast episodes where I talk about my knitting works in progress and my finished objects. I do a lot of pattern roundup videos, seasonal free pattern videos, other thematic and categorical pattern roundup videos, and all that fun stuff. But today we are talking about spring 2024 knitting trends. Now, whether or not you consider yourself a person who likes to follow knitting trends or mainstream fashion trends, or whether or not you consider yourself a person who is easily influenced by knitting social media, I think it's a lot of fun to take a step back every once in a while and kind of assess some of the patterns or trends in the content we're seeing on knitting social media and the patterns that we're seeing getting posted to Ravelry. I think this is a lot of fun. I do err on the side of more analytical as opposed to like laissez-faire. So that's definitely a me thing. But I also think it allows us to engage a lot more intentionally with our craft so we can make more informed decisions about which trends we will or will not participate in. So my plan for today is to do just that, talk through the trends that I've been observing. So I would love to know in the comment section below which of these trends you would or would not be interested in participating in, or if there are any trends that you think I have left out but you have really noticed lately. Side note, I'm filming this the day after my dad and I went to the Noah Khan concert and you better believe I was hollering all night and so my voice may just like crackle in and out. I will try to make sure it's not horrible. <laughs> the first spring 2024 knitting trend that I want to talk about is butter yellow. Now you might be thinking like yellow for spring, pastel for spring, groundbreaking. And that's the thing with all of these trends. None of them are new. None of them have just been invented, but they're definitely having their moment in the sun, so to speak. And so I really enjoy this butter yellow trend because I think it takes a pastel yellow and a sunshine yellow, which are more quintessentially spring, and it adds a little bit of grit to the colorway. It's a little bit dustier, it's a little bit more muted, and for those reasons I think it's a little bit more approachable for a lot of knitters who maybe love the color yellow, are interested in working with yellow, but may be a little uncomfortable with incorporating yellow into their wardrobes. I actually wore a yellow tank top in my very first video on High Fiber Knits ever and it was my sort of icon photo for a long time, me in this butter yellow tank top, so it's a little special place in my heart for that, but I just think it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I think for spring it's a really good transitional color. I think yellow looks really nice layered with other gray knits. I think it pairs perfectly with denim, whether it's blue denim or white denim. Even black denim, kind of like a washed black, almost charcoal gray kind of denim, does a really nice job of kind of complementing the color without being too harsh of a contrast. And so I just... I'm really happy to see bright colors as part of the spring color trend like this butter yellow. Next knitting trend I want to talk about is the polo neckline. I think the polo neckline is really timeless. It's really classic. I'm thinking of like school uniforms in that PK cotton kind of material. But I really like a lot of the knitwear versions of polo sweaters that I've seen take a little bit more of a contemporary approach to the fit and the styling. I also think polo necklines are great for the springtime because if I think about all of the fall and the winter knits that I tend to make, I'm thinking of like crew necks, I'm thinking mock necks, turtlenecks, full on rollover necks that do a really good job of keeping you cozy when it's cold out, but can start to feel a little bit stuffy as the weather warms up. So it's almost like the polo neckline took all of that fabric, just cut it down to the chest and gave it some room to breathe. I think it's beautiful. 
One polo neckline design that I have been keeping an eye on is the Knit Pearl Girls Austell Tee. Now this is a v-neck polo collared shirt. She's working up in Knitting for Olives Pure Silk. And I really, my attention was really caught by this design because the main body of the fabric is worked up in a meshy type of lace stitch, which I find really enjoyable to knit, moves quite quickly, it's airy, it's a great layering piece, which is again, really awesome for spring, getting that like breeziness and that versatility with other pieces in your wardrobe. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what Sophie does with this design. Now, I think Sophie did intend for this to come out a little bit sooner in the spring, but polo necklines when they're knitted can be a little bit tricky to maintain. I know that some folks have commented that the Elizabeth blouse, for example, by Petite Knit almost opens up a little too much to the point where you can see like the pearl stitches on the inside of the collar. And so I know that one thing Sophie was doing just very recently on her Instagram stories was showing that she was sewing some ribbon into the polo collar portion of the collar. I think with the intention of adding a little bit of weight and structure to that knitted fabric because pure silk can be a little bit floppy at times. Um, and so I think it's a really interesting opportunity to try out some new techniques. Um, and I think Sophie's gonna put together something really thoughtful and refined. The next polo design that has caught my eye is the Winona by Emily Y. Chen. This pattern stuck out to me for a couple of reasons. The first is that it comes in both a worsted weight and a fingering weight. You do need to buy the versions separately, but it does allow you to pick a sweater that is going to work best for your climate while still achieving the same style. And the style is the second part of this design that caught my eye. Because there is so much positive ease that is worked into the design, and the design is graded for 10 sizes, you really have an opportunity to take this style that is classically a little more, you know, fitted and refined in its styling, and it relaxes it a lot and makes it a little bit more casual and suitable to a broader range of personal styles. If you were looking for something a little more classic in its styling, the Stripe Me Right polo by Julia Lawn is definitely a great option for you. Now, the last two designs I talked about are drop shoulder in their construction. This one is a v-neck, but it does have a little bit more of a close fit. And I think that depending on the colorways that you choose, you can work in the stripes, omit the stripes, but really get something that feels very fresh and spring. Or if this was something you were interested in for a transitional piece in the autumn, once again, your colorways could really define the piece. This design is graded in sizes A to H for a bust of 31 and a half inches to 57 inches, and it's worked up in a worsted weight gauge. The next trend I wanna talk about is also a neckline trend, and it's the Henley. I think Henleys do read a little bit more casual than the polo style, and I think they're just a fun spin on the really, really common and super popular crew neck styles that we see a lot of in knitwear design. A Henley can be a great opportunity to do a really neutral type of staple piece, but also a fun opportunity to showcase some really special buttons depending on the look you're going for. The first Henley pattern I want to share with you is the Highline Henley by Tori Yu of Tori Knits NYC. This is a DK weight pattern that is graded for finished bust measurements between 40 inches and 72 inches with a recommended positive ease of 9 to 10 inches. Now, I had the opportunity to walk the High Line with my mom a few weeks ago in New York City and even though it wasn't quite spring yet and nothing was really growing, I do imagine that when everything is in bloom, the High Line is absolutely gorgeous. And Tori's sample really does scream spring to me because she has done hers in this stripy palette of this soft yet bright pink and purple paired with some cream. 
these do look like two row stripes to me and I think it could be a fun pattern for playing around with color or playing into a little bit more of a neutral palette. Again, depending on whether or not you want a little bit more of a classic kind of nautical vibe with your stripes or if you want to do something a little more playful and work in some contrast with some bright colors. The next Headley design I want to share with you is the Wanaka by Anna Elizabeth Anderson or Andy Knits. This is a DK weight stockinette top down in the round drop shoulder sweater. It is quite oversized and it is graded for 12 sizes. I have a couple of friends who did test knit this for Andy Knits and they love their versions so much. But what really stands out about this design to me is how the collar is doubly folded and the placket looks quite chunky so it stands up really nicely in terms of its proportions to the oversized fit of the sweater and also provides some of that structural integrity for the slightly larger buttons that are placed on the placket or at least these buttons seem larger than those you would typically find on a Henley where you know, usually the buttons are like pinky nail sized. So I really like this design. It's actually one that I am considering working up in some Knit Picks Wool of the Andes that I have in my pantry. So we'll see if I do that. Stay tuned. The next pattern is the Leopold by Trico Designs MCL. This is a DK weight top down drop shoulder construction as well, but it's set apart from the other Henleys in a couple of ways. The first is that it's worked up in a pretty chunky broken rib stitch. It looks like it's about a four by one, which feels like it would be a very engaging texture to be working up in the spring and also add just like a little bit of visual texture to spring outfits. And this pattern is also a bit of a two for one special because you have the option to either join in the round and work it up as a Henley or continue to work it flat and you'll end up with a cardigan. This pattern is graded for 10 sizes that range between a 37 inch finished bust and a 69 inch finished bust. The next spring 2024 knitting trend is all fluff, all mohair, everything. Now it's not that mohair necessarily went away, but I think that when I started knitting in early 2021 and throughout 2022, there was a lot of designers and a lot of knitters who were frequently, if not always, incorporating a strand of mohair or a strand of fluff into their projects. And I think throughout 2023 and moving a little bit more into 2024, there was a little bit of a drift away from that. One reason I think is that mohair is expensive. It does kind of double, if not more than double, the cost of a project compared to just holding wool alone. Another reason is that a lot of folks don't necessarily live in climates where that much mohair isn't really required necessarily. But I also think that there was a lot of knitwear designers who just stopped designing with mohair as often for sure petite knit throughout 2023 and even toward the latter end of 2022 did a lot more designs with like just Sendis Garn Pure Gint uh, and you know we followed suit very much so and that's that's cool. I find a lot more wearability with my knits that don't have mohair but this spring I think we're seeing a lot of full fluff garments and they're absolutely gorgeous. One design comes again from the Knit Pearl Girl and it's her recently released feather sweater. Now this one I think is, again, gorgeous, brings in that butter yellow trend that is so, so lovely. But I do think this one is a little bit more of a colder weather transitional garment because it holds three strands of a fluffy lace weight yarn together for a bulky weight, 14 stitches per four inch gauge. This pattern is graded for sizes A through L for a 29 and a half inch bust to a 61 inch bust, but the finished garment measurements are intended to be worn with quite a bit of positive ease. It looks like about 10 plus inches of positive ease. So the finished garment measurements are from 41 and a half inches to 
70.75 inches. Petite Knit has been doing a lot of designs in this cloud range, which has this really subtle ribbing that transitions into rolled stockinette, it looks like, for the collar and the hem and the cuff finishes. So she did her cloud pullover and now she has her cloud blouse, which is knit up in two strands of silk mohair at a DK weight. This design is graded from a double extra small to a 5XL and I really like that she's done hers in this bright green colorway. It's definitely a harken back to the sunny line that I was totally obsessed with this time last year. Another example of an all-over silk mohair garment that I've seen in testing is Ulan Knitwear's Swan Blouse. This one looks like it's done in one strand of silk mohair, but in some kind of textured stitch, which I'm really looking forward to seeing finished object photos of from Maria and her testers. If you're interested in more fluffy yarn designs, I'm going to direct you toward Knitted by Whitney's 25 size inclusive pattern roundup for all fluffy yarns. She does the best pattern roundups and this one features designs that are either all over fluffy yarns or prominently feature a fluffy yarn as part of the design. The next spring knitting trend is the side fastened slipovers. Slipovers are another one of those really great transitional pieces because you can layer them over t-shirts, you can layer them over long sleeves or fitted turtlenecks, but you can also just wear them as their own kind of garment. That might not be as necessarily true for these side tie slipovers, but I think this is a fun way to add an eye-catching design feature when you don't have to worry about stuffing all of that bulk into a winter coat. I think this design trend definitely started with the Amy slipover by Sendniskarn that came from their Soft for Women pattern booklet. I know Inga from Knitting Traditions is one of the first people I can recall knitting this up, but those Sendniskarn booklets are kind of difficult to get a hold of. And so a lot of designers have been coming out with their own iterations of that style in varying degrees of femininity and contemporary vibes. So lots of options. I've got them all here. One of them, once again, comes from Ulen Knitwear. It's her moss slipover. And I really like that design because it takes cables, which I think are typically more of a fall winter design element in my mind, but really lightens them up. And I think it was her color choice that did this in my mind because she's got this soft blue kind of marled situation going on in her sample, which I think just kind of breathes some levity and freshness into the design. K number three by Pia Trans is another option that is a pretty straightforward type of knit. And similarly, the Mammoth Slipover by Ode Knitwear. These are just some side tied uh, stockinette slipover designs. The Sorbet Slipover by Sandra Nelman takes a slightly different approach because it features a slipped stitch texture. So you can incorporate in a little bit more color and add some texture and visual interest to the outfit through this slipover. The Eurus Slipover by Egio Knit is a sideways construction that uses, once again, a lot of cables. And instead of tying on the side, this one fastens with some buttons on the side. And that's similar to the Lulu Slipover by Petite Knit, which comes in a couple of different gauges or weights. And the final spring knitting trend for 2024 that I want to talk about are the toggle and horn buttons. We've seen a lot of knitwear designers and knitters using, instead of like a round button, using these toggle or horn buttons on their cardigans and their side tied or side fastened slipovers lately. I just mentioned Aegyo Knit. She's been using a good number of toggle buttons on her knitwear. I know Anna from Brook Willow has used toggle buttons before, and I believe it was Jessica from Those Twins Who Knit who made 
I think one of the Aegeo knit cardigans and put some toggle buttons on there as well. I think there's something really nostalgic about the toggle button and something about it that reads a little bit more rustic. And so I think it's a really fun thing to add to knitwear because I'm personally a fan of contrast dressing or incorporating different kinds of aesthetics into outfits to provide some juxtaposition and really define my own personal style um, and not really box it into one kind of vibe or another. And so I definitely tend to dress a little bit more casual. I wear more oversized clothing, boxy fits. I describe it as more of a contemporary and um, definitely a very kind of like metropolitan or city vibe kind of style. And so for me, using a toggle button would add in some kind of rusticness, a little bit of that like cottage core, very intentionally handmade kind of vibe. And that's another thing. I don't think you really see toggle buttons very often commercially anymore. So they'd be a nice touch to signal that it is something that was really intentionally chosen and handmade for your wardrobe. So folks, those are all of the spring knitting trends for 2024. Every time I sit down to do a knitting trends video, I'm like, how am I going to do this without being super redundant with last season or last year? But there's always something new and exciting to talk about, which is why I sit down and I film these videos every season. So I hope you enjoyed. Once again, do let me know which of these trends excites you the most or which trends I may have missed in the comment section below. If you're interested to see more from me, YouTube thinks you will like this video. Thanks again for spending this time with me. And until I get to see you all again, I am wishing you wellness and happy knitting. Bye everyone.